Hi everyone, I'm Helen from LifeScale. I'm sorry, that's my cat Kuma that w can't wait to join the live webinar today with all of you. So first of all, thanks all of you for joining today that as you're here today, I believe that you're already ready to face your fear of going live because you get all the answer you need today. So by now, I think you likely heard about live shopping or you even make a few posts on LinkedIn about live shopping, but you might still have that fear of clicking that go live button because the many things can go wrong in the live, that many things can happen in the live, that not many things that you can control during the live. But today, we invited our expert, Marco, to explain all this fear to you and then provide all the answers that you can get to help you get encrypted for your first live shopping series. When it comes to the fear of going live, it usually comes with two parts. The first part is the technical fear, and then the second part is a strategy. For the technical part, it's something that you can really easily tackle as long as you have a good checklist to check everything that you can check beforehand. And for the strategy part, it's not that like it can't really prepare, but it takes time for you to accumulate the knowledge and do a lot of A-B testing and then figure out the best formula for your live shopping show as well. So let's not delay anymore. Let's invite our guest today, Marco, that our expert in the live streaming and selling for brands. So hi, Marco. Oh, hello, Helen. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure uh, and an honor to be here. And I hope all of you are safe and keep safe in these so challenging days. So, and let's share some things about overcome these uh, fears, this also this uh, live streams myths, and let's uh, let's go and do this. Yeah. So for. Those who haven't met Marco before, so Marco is a marketing, creative, and innovative consultant that has incredible expertise in the world of live streaming. So he'll surely be able to put you at ease with his knowledge and experience in how to face all this fear. So today we will be talking about three types of fear. Usually the three types of fear that people have before they go live is the fear of not having the right or good technical setup or equipment. The second sort of fear they will have, it's like, what if something goes wrong? And then the Final fear that they usually have, it's like, okay, what about the result and performance? They haven't even done anything yet, but they were like, what if we don't nail the show today? So we'll be talking about it one by one with Marco today. So let's tackle the first one first about that, Marco. So I know that many of our people in our community, they were like, oh, we're doing live streaming, but I don't have a production level class of camera and I don't have a crew for that. Can I do live streaming? Can I do live shopping? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You just, my starting kit for live streaming, a cell phone and a tripod. And with a clip to, 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 to send the, the cell phone, it's more than enough. Okay. Because when I started, it was with this, with this kit. <laughs> I started, even a worse cell phone, because by these days, cell phones are really good. So it's more than enough. You can you can make amazing things. Uh, and the other thing is um, about technical things. Um, for instance, if you spend uh, one thousand, two thousand dollars in the equipment and you don't like the experience, what will you do with all that uh, investment you made? It's something. Uh, you should think, and the other thing, uh, and this is kind of uh, a paradox, when you buy uh, expensive things, you expect uh, a better outcome, you know, you expect a, a, a better production level and everything, but you're starting, you can't do that, because it's how things are, you can't be perfect, or at, at least you can't excel at the first time, so... At the end, oh, I bought these uh, expensive things and I don't like the, re uh, the end result. Mm, so start with this, more than enough. Yeah, in fact, what we've seen around, among our client, most of them, they start with the, almost all of them, they start with them just a smartphone and then with the tripod. The reason is because the reason smartphone, the resolution is pretty cool, right? And with all sort of streaming software that we can easily use with the mobile phone, it's also something that's very handy for a brand to get started and without investing or actually you might not even need to have that sort of investment for a production camera because 
what about live streaming is about the authenticity. So probably this is what your audience is looking for as well. And speaking of for speaking about them streaming software, Mako, I know there are a lot of different choices available. We have, for example, StreamYard, we have like OBS, we have like Larix. Is it a lot more complicated and difficult to use compared to let's say uh, IG Live or like Facebook Live? Well, I don't think it is, but I'm I, I'm doing this for uh, more than five years. So, but uh, the, the experience I, I have uh, most with with this uh, tools is that it is very easy to use. Uh, for instance, uh, and it allows you to do more things uh, like uh, having this nice branding, uh, making different overlays, which also for your show they will bring more uh, light and more identity to your show and this is important also and but they, i don't think i don't see that they are difficult to use uh, as i said uh, one of the, the good things about StreamYard, for instance is that most of people who are in the because there's a group to help uh, most of people say it's very easy to go live okay i think for instance instagram is very easy to go live yes it is but for instance, going live on Facebook is not that easy as it seems. And the other thing, for instance, if you want to bring some guests to your show on Facebook, you can't do that with people. You have to have a tool like this one, like StreamYard, for instance. OBS is a, it's a very powerful tool. It's free, but it's not easy. It, it, it takes a long learning curve to manage to... to to use uh, OBS, so I don't, and, and the thing is, uh, at the end, we are uh, afraid of everything. Uh, we are afraid of the camera, we, 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 there's so much buttons to hit, to, but we think there's not so many buttons, but we think that. So if you start use a uh, difficult tool uh, in an environment that you are uh, already afraid, I don't think it's the right option. So uh, as usual, keep it simple, and for instance, using StreamYard, it's a very good option. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Plus, like the things that you're seeing around us right now, you see a logo, you see some banner like around us with our name tag. It's something that is really easy to add on with StreamYard or what, with a software, streaming software like OBS. With OBS, of course, you can do a lot more like a complicated thing if you have a whole team to support you or you figure out a kind of like a template that you would like to play around with. But I know that also, for example, like Laurix, that it's an also a really good alternative that you can use to pair with your smartphone to use it. Because basically, like me, I'm not an expert in the in the live streaming. I'm an expert in live shopping, but like doing going live myself, I've been in there probably like one year, two year doing live show. And when I first get started with like Larix to do the live streaming to do live shopping show, it was really handy and easy. It's basically two step copy and paste. So I think there are a lot of fear that I also have before I get into this that I thought. Oh, there is like a bunch of link that I don't understand any characters in there. I have to paste the key. What if I paste it wrong? If you do like a good technical one before that, I think the kind of fear can be overcome by a lot of practice as well. Right, Marco? Absolutely. Practice is it's very important. Um, because the, 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 I, I confess, uh, live streaming is the formula one of content because it's very difficult. Yes, it is. It's very um, resource consuming, uh, even with you, because you have to put energy doing this. You're not sitting reading uh, um, articles and then writing down very easily. You have your time. If you want, you can make a stop and then you come back. No, it's it's real time. It's real energy. It's It's hard. It is. But in the opposite side, it's very thrilling. It's very good to be in here and interact with the audience. I'm, I'm here uh, watching on YouTube the comments, and we will be there uh, asking you, answering you. And but 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 it's it's very important. This uh, and we will talk uh, uh, in two weeks about this advantage. But but it's very important this connection you made with your audience on live stream. So one thing you can do. There are two things you should be aware of. Uh, one, practicing is the best teacher you can have. Okay, it's practicing. And uh, the other thing is you can train on. Uh, 
fake lives, if you know what I mean. Uh, pretend your life, but you can go, uh, for instance, you can go live on private uh, uh, destinies, if 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 I made myself clear. And then it, the the risk is it's 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 zero, and you can. Uh, just pretend you're doing a live show, showing your things, uh, interacting with the audience, for instance, pretending every time, of course. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, Helen, uh, in the future, we can make something to uh, make a, a guide, a stepping guide, uh, how you can uh, start on live streaming. We can maybe in the future we can. But uh, yes, practicing is good because... You won't be okay. Oh, okay. Now I have to hit this button now, and you lose your audience because you're doing. But uh, if you are uh, prepared, okay. I know what I have to say. I need to make a strong uh, introduction. I need to um, and make people understand why they should be turning in. I should, for instance, if I'm selling, I should uh, explain properly how this uh, product work. How. Uh, overcome the objections, uh, everything, how to interact with uh, people, how I can answer the, the questions and everything. It's very important. If you know everything in advance, you will feel more comfortable, more uh, confident to face the camera. And I'm sure about this. In uh, one, two, three months after doing this, you, you will look back and, oh, my God, how I evolved. Amazing. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, absolutely. I think doing a test beforehand, it can definitely reassure you because you have all the button touch once. So if there anything happened that you sort of like know, and when you're panicking, you have a memory in your brain that, oh, it's here, what I can do, and here to stop or here to restart, etc. But let's take a look at, we already get a, quite some question coming in, Marco. So hi, Ryan, by the way. So we got a question from Madison that is, what type, which type of brand do you feel like we adopt the live shopping trend the fastest in Europe? or in North America, like do you think a larger brand with a larger talent pool of host or a smaller brand will be able to adopt to this trend like faster? I don't think it's a, a matter of size. I think it's a matter of mindset and culture, okay? Uh, if you have a small brand, uh, because for instance, you on your uh, life scale on, uh, the, on your portfolio, you have huge brands, right? But I've seen, uh, Portuguese uh, stores, uh, dressing stores, uh, making kind of uh, a live shopping, okay? So I think it's a matter of uh, mindset, also a matter of survival, okay? It's very important. If you trust in your products, if you have an uh, audience, if you think that you can uh, make an entertaining show, you can... Uh, solve problems to people while you're live. I think it's your time to go and do live shopping. I don't think it's a, a matter of, uh, uh, not at all, a, a matter, oh, I, I won't be, do live shopping because my brand is unknown. I won't do live shopping because um, I'm, I'm small. Because, uh, no, 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 it's, it's a matter of, okay, I need to do this because I need money, I need to sell. I think it's more about this, okay? You can do it better uh, because you have budget to buy good equipment, to buy, uh, to for instance, to have someone to to make the shows, an actor or a celebrity or an influencer, maybe. But in the, on the flip side, people will love your business uh, lots of times, most of the times because of you, because it's you there. It's you. Uh, they were used to uh, see on the store, to interact with. So it's very important to keep this uh, identity, this branding, because people will love to listen things from you. I think that's very true. Like, if I can give one example, we see in our community that one of the really popular show that we have and it's really good as in not just money about sales but also the engagement is the founder herself being the host of the live shopping show to do a new product launch so basically she was describing the story behind the accessory that she was designing and then the other one was the christmas sales 
you can hear that it's a Christmas sale, so it's a really sales heavy show. But the whole show, she was like just being herself as a founder to give a recommendation, to mix and match in a chain with you, which one's gonna go better with the Christmas dress that you're gonna have for the dinner, or maybe like instead of good gift for you for the year, like it's really that personality that people or brand are able to show via live streaming and that makes people feel really close with the brand. So you got like a way stronger community bonding. You can get a lot more engagement because it's real life. It's really like a conversation. It's not like a comment on a post that you might reply after a day. And the most important is when they're really happy and a pleased viewer, they see the product right below and because they already love the brand and that's sort of encouraged them to shop as well. And I think that's, it's also an answer for um, Ryan's questions. Like Ryan asked, like as a show host, how is live shopping different than the live streaming? And I think the main difference is, is you need to have a really soft selling skills if your community is more that kind of personality. And in a live shopping show, if you know that your community is like, oh, I want to chase for all sort of deal, like a good discount. I want to chase for like an exclusive bundle and that the host need to really take this mentality to live shopping show and then to amplify that that perks during the lifetime because it's only that period of time that they'll be able to get that deal, right? That's the, the precious things about that. So I think the, the question to um, Ryan Sansler probably is um, really just be yourself and emphasize the things that's during that time. I know if Marcos also have some opinion on that, like as a host, what do you think is different between doing a live shopping show and live streaming? Well, you should, yeah, you should have these uh, selling skills and the, the good, th uh, the, I think also the focusing on uh, live shopping and on normal live streaming should be different because, uh, for instance, if you go to a live shopping show and you start talking about uh, different topics and everything, you will lose the, the point and you will lose the focus on what you're doing. Okay, so it's good to, for instance, if people keep coming with um, questions, parallel questions, for instance. Okay, this is a good question, but uh, I will answer you after. Okay, because otherwise you will, because for instance, if you have 10 products to, to present and sell during the show, and you spend uh, more than half of the time uh, answering parallel questions, you will lose the audience, you will lose the focus, you won't reach the goal. Okay, so it's very important to be laser focused uh, when you're doing these uh, situations. And also about preparation. If you have to prepare, of course, uh, uh, a normal uh, live stream, but uh, if you are uh, doing this uh, selling, you should prepare even more, for instance, uh, usual uh, objections. If you, people, okay, I know, yeah, it's good, but uh, I have this problem with that. If you know beforehand that this question may appear, you will be more prepared to answer fast and act fast. And uh, you will uh, give trust to people who are on the other side. And trust is very important, but in selling is crucial. It's a matter of life. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really key point of uh, answering the question regarding to the product. It's something that you really should emphasize if you're positioning that live shopping show sales as an objective. Because normally when you do live streaming, maybe we can see a lot of that during the pandemic, right? A lot of brand doing like maybe self-care section that's hiring a yoga instructor just to help us to have an instructor to be with us to do yoga exercise, etc. And I see one of the viewers, Jennifer, is asking, um, how long, oh, sorry, Jennifer is also asking for a guy that Marco has been mentioning. So for anyone who is interested in any sort of tips and guide or checklist that we have been sharing today, if you want um, a soft copy of that, you'll be able to subscribe. I've shared the link in the chat. You will be able to subscribe to academy.lifescale.tv slash live feed, and then you'll be able to see all the checklists on there as well. And going back to Jennifer's question, it's about how long do you think a live should last? Well, it's it's kind of the, the one million question and there's no uh, an only answer, as usual. It depends, for instance, um, if you are selling um, a lipstick, is different than if you are selling uh, something that people will spend $2,000, okay? Uh, because uh, I don't, I think that there won't be lots of, questions about lipstick, but I think if we are spending $2,000 in something, 
there will be uh, maybe uh, lots of questions to answer. Just maybe. It's the first thing you, you should think, do is try. Okay, because it's the best uh, way to to see to see if the expectations fit the reality. Okay. But I have some things uh, important to, for you to understand uh, is um, think about uh, people's life, okay? What are they doing at the moment you're broadcasting? Are they working? Are they taking care of their kids? Are they, look, how many uh, free time do they have to be watching your show? Well, uh, maybe half an hour. So maybe your show should be around 20 minutes. Okay. And then split that 20 minutes for each product you want to sell. Or on the opposite side, think, how much do I need to explain how this works to my customers? I think that's a really, really great tips and tricks for it. I hope people are jotting notes right now because I we also get asked a lot about this question and I always say like it's really depending on your brand your personality your audience because like exactly if your target audience is moms you want to pick a specific time that mom is not going to be busy and you have to think about how much time moms can take in their day if you want if they're your target audience or viewer right and so okay Enough Q and A for now. Let's go back to our fears so we can finish that so everybody can have what they need to get started in live shopping. So we talk about the fear of the good technical setup or like the equipment, and then just basically a smartphone and child port will do. And there are a lot of app like Laurix that's easy to pair with your mobile phone that you can go like almost as easy as Instagram. Not gonna lie, gonna have to say gonna be the same. You have like one more step, but it's really almost as easy as I can just pick it up in like two minutes. So there we have a second second fear that I think we might, we might want to provide checklists on this is the fear of what if something goes wrong? Is there something they can control, Marco? Or like, no, actually you cannot control anything? Well, uh, as usual, maybe half, 50-50. Uh, <laughs> uh, what you can control? You can control what you're about to say, okay? You can prepare and uh, again, uh, stress, on preparation okay it's very important okay this day i will talk about this this and this uh okay uh, on this is important to talk about we have this credit line that people can use to pay we have these uh, situations that uh, uh we improve this product uh, uh, and now you can do this this and this and before you you couldn't do that uh, for instance uh which uh, again objections are a very important thing when you're selling because the most uh, properly you answer these objections and you overcome that is the more the more because objections appear when people wants to buy from you and they have that final fear if i made myself clear so if you know that people okay yeah i think your product is good but I think uh, it's very expensive. Well, but we have this credit line. Oh, really? Great. Or you can have a discount or, or something. If you understand which pain points people have uh, about buying from you, have the, write it down and write the solution and tell to people. It's very important this, okay? If you know well, the, the product is good. Uh, if you know well uh, the audience, it's also good. And uh, live streaming is a, a, a great way to 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 know your audience. This is what you can control. Okay, what you can't control: internet. If internet goes down, you can't do nothing. <laughs> uh, for instance, if uh, you're doing from a computer. This could, for instance, you can be uh, out of electricity, uh, uh, a fail of energy could happen. Um, you can't control, for instance, if a troll arrives. You can't control that, but you can't control how do you feel about that? How do you react to a troll? This you can control, okay? 
Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this later, uh, Helen, or, or I can talk right now. No, no, it's good. No, it's good. I think it's a really good point that you make like a big uh, scenario, like um, electricity went down, internet just shut down, and there is nothing more we can do. But what is the positive side is before the show, they can do a lot of dry run, right? To do like audios, like video feed testing, or assuming the internet's going to suddenly cut off, you can test if your Wi-Fi or your internet connection is steady. Absolutely. Is there some, maybe you can provide some suggestions for them. How can they do when they want to test the audios or video feed and then the Wi-Fi connection as well? Is there some method that you can provide? Okay, absolutely. Well, if you go, for instance, uh, let's start with with internet. Very, very good situation. One thing uh, I've uh, learned uh, is that you need at least, and uh, on the internet, the main thing, the, the main important thing is upload speed, not download speed. It's upload speed. If you can have uh, around 10 megabytes per second upload speed, this will be good. But it doesn't mean you can't do uh, live streaming without that speed because I, I made it for a long time and I made it, <laughs> okay? Uh, good thing, use wired connection because Wi-Fi is not that stable. If you can't use wired connection, be as close as you could from the router, okay? Because this will provide you a more stable signal and internet. This is good. And you can, if, if you Google speed, uh, internet speed test, there's a uh, speed test uh, by Hookla, O-O-K-L-A, which is a very good speed test, but also uh, Google has his own speed test. Okay, so you can, you can do that. Image, it's very easy to test because it shows. Okay, for instance, if you connect camera, if it shows, okay, usually it's it's okay, okay. One of the problems is about microphone because you it's harder to test. But uh, tools like StreamYard, Restream, they have this uh, leveling, and if it works, uh, it's working. But again, another important thing. When, for instance, I started lots of shows, uh, lots, not so, no, not so many, but uh, a few shows without sound. No pro, there's no problem by doing these uh, small mistakes. Nobody will die. Okay, it's very important, and you should not be, uh, oh my god, my life so uh, frustrated because I've seen people frustrated because they, they can. They couldn't go live and the, the live was not going good because of technical situations don't stress don't uh, overreact on that because it's acceptable okay you don't have to to think just finish the live and start over again it's there, there's not a problem okay so this this is truly important but uh speed test it's important okay uh the image you you should um check again also important please don't have noises around don't have all uh, windows or doors open okay a, an important thing is the background your background maximum should be neutral uh, the best it's to reinforce your message otherwise you will lose uh, credibility you will lose uh, trust from your audience if you're uh, background is providing noise to your show. This How is all important. I see. So regarding to the speed test that Marco just mentioned, once again, if you want to get the checklist of uh, the kind of tool, recommended tool to do that, uh, just subscribe to the lifescale.tv and like academy.lifescale.tv slash live feed will be providing all the lists over there. And I think what Marco is saying that it's really important that you experience and you just sort of get all those mistakes out and by how do you, how can you do that and not show it to your audience i think that's it's where the dry one or like rehearsal rehearsal or practice comes in right i think we see a lot of clients that they also do a lot of test event or like a um, dry run before their show so they sort of encounter those small mistakes that they wouldn't notice before they're going live for example there's no sound oh because i didn't talk on the mic next time i will remember during the the lifetime <laughs> talk it up i think Let's not speak it like it's a really like alien experience, right? We're all on Zoom. These days we're all on Zoom. There must be some occasion that you mute your mind and you forgot. 
right? Absolutely. It's exactly the same. That you forgot that you have your camera on, that you show your pajamas, or you forgot to have your camera on, etc. Things that you will face in Zoom, because it's a real-time conversation, it might fairly happen during the live, but it, you will understand, you will know what to pay attention after a couple of live. I think that's what Marco is trying to encourage everybody is like just do a lot of practice so you notice what kind of thing that your your memory it's not in place yet to pay attention to that and then you feel at ease for doing that as well so we have we have solved what if something goes wrong the fear of, about that part is something that we can check and then to prepare your mindset so let's talk about the the last one the fear of the performance and result because i know in our community as well there are quite common fears like oh i'm doing my first live shopping show and i want it to be a big production uh, but i'm worried that the investment is not going to be worth it or like what if not many people are going to come to join us what if i don't make any sales as i want it what what can they do what kind of expectation you think they should be setting Marco? no expectations <laughs> everything it's a learning uh step um, I once I, I used the the analogy about a small boy trying to walk. Do you think that a small boy uh, or, or or girl when they they are uh, starting uh, to trying to to stand in fits they are thinking about okay in a few years I will be riding a bike or running. They won't. They they, they just want to stand and then try to walk. And that's that's it. It's just that if you, because at the beginning, you will be make the 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 mistakes of a beginner. You will have the results of a beginner. You will have everything that a beginner deserves, and usually gets. So don't expect too much at the beginning. It's uh, the the expectation is don't expect. Uh, what you should expect at 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 beginning uh, have fun learn and uh, at the end okay let's see what i did good what i did wrong and uh, let me see uh, okay i need to improve this 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 but i made this good i made this good i made this good and just by the fact of going live you're above millions of people millions Oh, I will say thousands of millions of people. So be proud of that. Be happy because you made it. And then start do giving baby steps. Okay. If, of course, if you have a, a well-known brand, if you have a, a client basis big, okay, you should expect to sell something at the beginning. It's normal. But if you have a, a small store, if you started for not so long if you have a, a, a small uh, customers okay things won't be amazing at the beginning but uh, think um, on the long on the long term all every time i totally okay. agree with that marco i think what marco is trying to trying to emphasize is like you gotta start like as soon as you can because it's a lot of test and learn and we can see a lot of early adopter, they've been starting, for example, like from last year, they've sort of figured out what kind of host works the best for them, what kind of formula of the content that works the best for their audience, even the length of your live shopping show that we just get that question, that they know what is the ideal length of their live shopping show for the audience. And these are the things that you can maybe learn from other industry or um, your brand in the same industries from their experience. But if like, you know, live shopping is pretty new. You don't get a lot of people to just to take reference from at this point. So it's really important if you want to get ahead in the game that you have to start doing those things. But I think it's also really important to, to understand that it's just like doing a YouTube channel. You won't get like million subscribers from the beginning, but if you want to have already really, really good quality video up from the beginning, so you're ahead of the game, not just the beginner, beginner, there are a lot of resources you can, you can try to explore. For example, uh, a position that we um a help that we're gonna introduce in the latest series like a remote live producer as a brand you probably don't have a live shopping team or live streaming team to handle this content but you don't have to have them right away 
you can also hire someone that has the ex has the ex expertise on that. So you skip a lot of learning it already on the technical side, for example. And all you have to figure out and focus is the content that fits your community the best, which your marketer should already know the best about that. They just have to till it back that it's going to be fit for the live shopping purpose, right? So Marco, I have to stop you a little bit here just to answer the question because we've got a lot of questions coming on our yeah. channel. Thank you. So uh, we have a question asking, like, what if some what if something wrong happened? Sh what should I do with the community? Like, should I go back live? Should I maybe, uh, I don't know, find a way to notify them? Or should I just like, oh, get panic? Panic is not an option. <laughs> panic is not an option. Um, let me, uh, it depends, OK? For instance, um, if you can't get back and start over again, it's what I should do. For instance, uh, I had some some live shows with a guest, and for instance, my guest uh, was sick. Uh, there were technical problems; we couldn't make it. And what you can do: uh, make an announcement to your audience. Okay, we were we were planning to go live today. I'm so sorry due to technical problems, we couldn't make it. Uh, soon we will give you another uh, day to, to do this. Uh, if if the problem, for instance, the internet crashes and you're doing a live show, if you can in a space of 10 minutes get back, get back. If you can't, uh, just let people know what happened. Okay, I'm so sorry. We will be back soon. Yeah. What can happen? Uh, maybe, maybe that could be uh, one, two, uh, three haters, trolls. Oh, you, you suck. It's not good. And what? these people are not important for your business. Okay. They will be complaining about everything. Uh, there's one thing uh, I learned from my business uh, life is there are so, uh, some types of clients that you should not want to be your clients okay because they will complain about everything and they will um keep you frustrated and everything so uh there are the, that people that that's that's that but what you should think you don't uh recognize you don't give importance to these situations okay just give important to what is really important those people who love you who love to buy from you that's that people that you should be taking care and um i think uh, apart, i just want to add a little bit on the chat uh, like troll comment i think apart from like how you handle the comment to put it in the really uh, humor way to respond to that definitely going to add some point to your brand but it's also important to know that these days there are a lot of um, company technology that's providing a chat moderation so like, for example, when you're doing live shopping, there is like easily a check moderation that you can probably just ban those troll comments. You can filter out some um, swear word if you want, and you can remove a specific comment. There are a lot of things that actually people who provide the technology think about that. So they provide solution for you to handle these kind of scenario and situation. It's really more important that it's on your side that you need to know those function exist. And you need to do a dry run. So when those things happen, it might not happen all the, all the time, right? Absolutely. It might happen Absolutely. like 10 times after you go on live. And you still remember, oh, I can actually maybe remove the comment or ban this um, an appropriate user that is maybe it's not bringing fun to the whole community. So these are also the things that we need to like understand. It's all ready for you. You just have to look into that and get used to using that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, for instance, I made uh, hundreds of live shows. I only had once uh, the situation, okay? Uh, by that time, I didn't deal the, the, the right, the proper way, the, the situation. Um, but if it was today, I will I know how to, to manage it. It's, it's something you should uh, think. It's, it's very important how you manage because it's your show. It's your house. You're the owner. You're the host. You should uh, make the rules. You should set the rules and make them <laughs> clear, okay? So, for instance, if there's one people ruining the experience of you and your community, if that person keeps ruining the situation, it's your fault. 
as a host, if someone is ruining the situation, you should put that people, that person in their place by blocking him, by muting him, by, by something to keep things going smoothly. I think we all have a sort of like control over our brand property, right? No matter on Facebook, on Instagram or anywhere, it will happen. It's just in what form because it's a live stream. So it's in the form of chat message that's coming in. And just like any other platform, there's always a way for a brand to have the control to be able to moderate and to make sure that the experience is pleasant for all the community that join in today or for the, for the whole uh, brand safe um, image as a whole as well. And I saw another question that I think is actually exactly what um, Marco would like to say about the performance and the result for the, for the live shopping show. So Madison was asking like many um, people might think that, okay, cause I'm worried about my performance that something might go wrong. And I also worry about the results. So I want to do minimal resources and input. So instead of doing a live, I want to just play a pre-recorded video. What's your opinion against, so I know that you think live is the best, right? Cause that you have the real time interaction and what other arguments or like point of view that you will share with people who think pre-recorded video may be the way to go. I, I agree with pre-recorded video. If doesn't make me feel as a, a viewer stupid. Because for instance, you pre-recorded a video. Um, okay, let me know your uh, uh, questions so I can uh, answer you. And then people start making questions and nobody is answering you. As a viewer, I feel stupid. Okay. Um, I understand that maybe because we don't have the, the time, we don't have the, I don't feel safe by being this here without uh, without the net <laughs> down, down. But um, for instance, uh, even the networks don't like too much that you uh, run a pre-recorded video as a live video, okay? Yeah, if you have, uh, if you, there's no other way, it's okay. Okay, it's not my my thing, but I think you can do it. But don't make people who are watching the show feel like they were stupid because you are uh, pretending something. If you are honest at the beginning, look, this is a pre-recorded video. I'm doing this, this, and this. I will have this guest or whatever. Uh, I'm trying trying to sell this. It's not a problem for me. If you make this statement, if you make the disclaimer at the beginning and you don't try to fool your audience, okay? And if, for instance, you are following the 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 video, the 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 live the the pre-recorded live video on chat, for instance, if you are interacting in real time, this could be okay. Otherwise. <laughs> That's a really good point, Marco. Because, like, if I'm an audience, I attend your live because you tell me to be there at 10 a.m. If today that's a pre-recorded video, all the question has been asked, uh, it's not going to be answered. Why am next time? Why would I still show up on the time? Because this has make no different yeah, than the video that you put in your account. But I absolutely. do think that if pre-recorded, like we said, starts small. If a pre-recorded video really is the only way that can make you feel at ease to try the technology out, I would say, like Marco advice, having a check moderator really will help a lot because you're still maintaining that real-time interaction in a text form, even though you're not doing it in the video. And I think me as a viewer, an opinion that I can share is like, when I make a comment and if the viewer pick my question or just give me a shout out, you feel special because you make the time to come here and then Someone actually say my name because I leave, left a comment. So I think these are the really cool thing and really nice thing. That's why people enjoy watching live and joining a live and interacting with the host. It's the really like the authentic interaction, right? Absolutely. It it makes a lot of difference and and on selling, even even better. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes it, it make me just just think about this. You are. Um, watching a live show, a live selling show, where are 10 people looking at it, at this. You're showing a product and there's someone who uh, asks something. 
Something that, for instance, uh, three more people on the audience had that same question, but because they are shy, they don't put the question. By answering in real time to this question, you may have uh, made four sales, sales because you answered the question one people made in real time and uh, three more were afraid to, to, to ask, but they have that same question. It's, it's a lot of difference for me. That's, a, that's a actually a really, really good point that um, we also seen a lot during the live because like when we're watching our client shows, there are a lot of clients asking, oh, I want to see what if these accessories go on top of these woodies match. And then the host will like, okay, I think this question has been asked a lot. So I'm going to sh show to you guys how it looks like. And then you will be able to see in the result. We got like a really record big breaking show in the end of the day because a lot of a lot of question and answer. And I'm sure, like Marco said, a lot of people maybe they're too shy to ask. They also have this question in mind. They also make up a chase because you answer that question. It's the thing that you can prepare a lot of things. But good thing about live live shopping show, it's like you co-write the content with your audience. Your audience yeah. asks you a question. And then you answer that and that makes it a great content like you we were like having a headache to think oh, what is the great content to keep and sometimes the great content is what people are going to ask you and how you're going to respond to that as well right absolutely absolutely cool so we've talked about free fear today that we talk about the fear of not having the proper setup technical wise and the venue where should i go the fear of what if something goes wrong and which marco is really nice prepare a checklist for all of you then i'll be able to share with you in them in our website you'll be able to subscribe i share the link in the chat as well and then we share the last thing what is the expectation and what if like the fear of the performance or the result of the live shopping is not going well so let me just take a last look and see if we have more question in that okay so we have one last question for today marco so the question from caroline is asking do you have any a uh, camera you already explained that the smartphone is good enough so you have any mic or wire recommendation for people to like just get started because you said microphone is a huge problem, right? Like something that's yeah. mentioned. Microphone, for instance, if you are starting with uh, the cell phone, uh, the the headset they usually provide is more than enough. Okay. Again, um, the, the thing you should think is, uh, I need to start right now. What do I have? I have my cell phone. Uh, maybe this is around $20, this thing. And I have my uh, headset. Start with that. Okay. Then, for instance, you can buy uh, 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 a microphone like this one. But microphone is very difficult to advise uh, because, for instance, if you are making a live, uh, a, live, a live shopping and you want to use a table and you want to put the camera down there and then you have like like TV shows, you know, Maybe it's better to use a lavalier microphone. Rode have uh, very nice microphones on that. Okay. it's I think it's one of the best brands, and they are affordable, Rode. And you, sh you should think, but before investing in that, just try with what you have, okay? if Okay, if you say to me, okay, I have a million dollars to invest on that. Okay, <laughs> do it. <laughs> uh, but it depends, for instance, if you want to be close to the camera like, like I am. Blue, it's a, a very good brand. Samsung, also. And there's another one, Sure. They have amazing mics, but they are, they are good. But you know, when something is good, usually it's expensive. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the question. But uh, yes, uh, I think I have... Um, a list on Amazon about some equipment you should you should buy about about webcams. Even though, for instance, you want to broadcast from your PC from your computer. By these days, I recommend to use uh, if you don't have webcam, use your cell phone as the webcam. Okay. There are some uh, if if you go to if you Google it, uh, uh, apps to use my cell phone as a webcam. That's a, cool tip as well. that's a really, really cool tip. Like if someone feel, uh, for example, if they want to pair with a more advanced um, like StreamYard OBS system that is with the P3 
PC, but they don't have a good camera. Smartphone camera these days are really, really good as well. I think that's a really good tip that I can include in the checklist. So everybody who is like one adult alternative, they will be able to get that. And also for the brand, if you haven't catch, uh, you can't catch what the Marco was saying or the brand name for the microphone, we will also be including all of that in the checklist. So you won't miss any of that information as well. Absolutely, because the, 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 the main problem about webcams is then since uh, lockdown started and the, the pandemic started, the prices raised, for instance, I have here a one, uh, one webcam, which I bought it around seven, six years ago. And I spent, I think, $55. Now it's a, around 150 uh, It's crazy. I, I don't think it's, uh, it's for me, it's uh, not good to, to advise, oh, buy this camera, because I feel a pain in my heart by saying so. You already have a cell phone. The quality of the camera, average camera on a cell phone, it's better than this one. So use it. Exactly. Just be sure that he's, he's connected to, to the charger because if it gets away from battery, it's not good. Okay. Yeah. And understand, but you can use a cell phone as a source, as the live stream source, or just as a, a webcam. Amazing. So today we discussed three types of fear that basically everything technical, you can almost test it beforehand. So like the one, if you're taking note right now for the whole webinar, so basically everything that Mark has mentioned today, the technical part, you can do a lot of dry run to get used to that, to trying to encounter the situation. And then the other part of the fear, which is the, str the strategy part, like Mark has mentioned, you can come up with a lot of different scenario. How would you respond to that? If that happens, you can come up with the sales pitch or not, if your show is not a sales oriented for the content. But also it's really important for the other 50% of your content is a lot of test and learning that you have to learn how to immediately in real time to collaborate and co-write it with your viewer and your community because they will be asking you a question. And I think that is not something that you can really learn by just thinking about it and preparing it. You can only learn by encountering the situation. So probably getting started as soon as possible to encounter all the technical difficulties in your dry run and to try, try to test and learn what is the best content for your audience to together to co-write with them will be the best solution for that as well. So apart, like now everybody have to note for how to face the fear and embrace with the fear. So next episode of this webinar with Marco, we'll be talking about what are the benefits to use live streaming to sell. So Marco already previewed a little bit during the live today because of the authenticity that you can answer 10 people's question in mind, the two shine to ask just by answering one question from the chat, etc. If you want more information like that, especially if you, if you're, uh, objective of using live shopping these technologies really not community bonding but to sell and that will be the episode that you don't want to miss so it will be on the 29th the same time 10 a.m est that we will be talking about that so you can either follow macro's linkedin or follow lifescale.tv and page you'll be able to get the most updated news on that as well is there some last line or last word macro that you want to share with everybody before we finish today well don't overthink uh, about going live, I think one of um, I, I will uh, uh, talk about my three layers of uh, respect you should have. Uh, this applies to everything. These uh, three layers I I like to talk. First one, respect your identity. Okay, so for instance, it it uh, on this case it's about uh, your self identity and the brand. For instance, if you talk, if you're working in a corporation, don't try to imitate someone else because you think they look good. They they, they that the way they do things works good. Uh, don't don't fake uh, what because that's the problem about live. It's the the problem of, about live streaming. Uh, if you are faking, sooner or later you will be spotted, okay? First thing. Second layer of respect is respect your evolution. So, as I said before, if you are a beginner, you will have uh, insights, uh, outcomes from a beginner. Don't try to, okay, uh, this guy, for instance, I have five years on live streaming. If you, have, if you want to, at the first live, be uh, doing live streamings as I do, 
I think we'll be frustrated because it's impossible because I have, I, I think thousands of hours in front of a camera. It's not, it's not fair for you to think, uh, just think it's uh, before uh, uh, thinking about the outcome you will get from the, is it fair to expect that much from me? Is it fair for me? Maybe it's not. I'm beginning. I should have beginner outcome. That's not that's just that. Okay. In one year, you should look at uh, the first one and you should laugh. Oh, look, I was so bad. <laughs> but now I improved. Now I'm good. And the third layer of respect is respect your audience. At each moment, give them the best piece of content that you have at that moment okay again you should not uh will to send the same message be as good as gary v for instance as tony robbins because they are as oprah no it's not what i'm expecting for you but i want you at the end think i made the best i can is the best way for you to respect your audience is what they expect from you. Great. Thanks a lot today for Marco sharing all the tips. And then thanks everyone for tuning in today as well. I hope this has been helpful and useful for everyone. And we'll be seeing you guys again on 29th, 10 a.m. for the what are the benefits of using live stream to sell then. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye, Marco. Bye, everyone. Um,